anyways. So uh, I'm doing a little something different today. <clears throat> At the beginning, uh, when we announced our channel, I uh, I'll let you guys know that we we don't just do classic cars here and trucks. Uh, we do uh, motorcycles and side by sides as well. And it's just our passion. We have a lot of passions here. So, uh, but anyway, a lot of people trust or take their their UTVs to the dealer. And let me tell you, I've had so many bad experiences with warranty work, and that's really the only time I take my stuff to the dealer. <clears throat> and uh, you know, the, the guy that's going to change your oil at the dealer is the lowest guy on the. Uh, pecking order I guess you could say and you know I'm sure there's plenty of good mechanics out there but um, I've just heard a lot of horror stories so I'm gonna show you guys that you don't need to take your car to the dealer to change the oil if you have just basic tools and some basic know-how or the ability to read and follow directions you can do this it's just like changing the oil in a, a regular passenger car so um, I've got my car warmed up or warming up right now. I'm not going to get it too hot <clears throat> But it's real important especially if the car has been sitting for a little bit to uh, Get that oil circulating into all the passages in the bout in the in the galley and uh, Basically just gets it all primed up and then it it uh, agitates any sort of particulates that are at the bottom of the engine uh, This is this is in fact a wet sump engine uh, a lot of side-by-sides nowadays are dry sump. Um, it's the same basic theory, however, you have an oil tank instead of the oil sitting in a, a, a pan, I guess you could say. So, um, anyway, I'm not going to go into too much detail with that. Um, but, yeah, here we go. I'm going to change the oil on this Can-Am. It's a 2022 model. It's a Maverick XRS, or an X3, rather. It's a 900 uh, turbo. It's a 72 inch wide model. Uh, it doesn't have all the technology that all, a lot of cars have these days, but that's kind of what I wanted. I just wanted a car that's all business and uh, none of that GPS stuff. I just don't, I don't need it. So uh, I usually know where I'm going. So let me uh, get this thing shut down and I will start showing you guys what you need to do this. All right, so I have my tools here laid out for you guys. You're gonna need a T27 Torx, uh, either a screwdriver or um, socket like I have here, 3 8 drive, 3 8 ratchet, 17 millimeter um, deep socket. You don't need a deep, you just need a longer extension. Uh, looks like I'm about a six or seven inch extension, 3 8 drive. And then I've got an eight millimeter quarter inch drive here, socket, and uh, another seven inch um, extension, and my quarter inch ratchet. Resist the urge to use power tools. There's nothing here that you shouldn't be able to do by hand. And, uh, and, I, and I say that because people have the tendency to want to put them back with power tools. And I use these tools all day, and I still check them by hand. Uh, my my what I'm saying is my electric tools so um, just resist the urge in this particular case to use power tools it doesn't take much longer just to take them off um, by hand so um, that's my uh, piece of advice I've got a simple little old cooking pan here from I think backpacking or camping or something and then I bought this kit at my local uh, dealership yeah, I use the 1050 full synthetic um, the range or I'm sorry the viscosity is uh, because I, I run the car in warmer temperatures we're actually going out this weekend so it's gonna be uh, in the hundreds so um, I'm using a heavier viscosity so 1050 uh, they do make 040 and um, for uh, cooler temperatures so this is a BRP kit comes with four quarts and oil filter these uh, oil filters are actually cartridge style so that you take a cap off and you basically pull the old one out 
and drop this guy in. It comes with a, uh, a gasket set. Um, and the, the uh, larger bolt is the main drain, drain plug. And then there's a smaller bolt adjacent which is the eight millimeter guy. And it also has a torque provision on that smaller bolt in case you want to use torques, but I would recommend the, the socket. So, all right, let me get you under there and uh, show you what we're doing. All right, so I'm under the car and I'm gonna try to get you through this hole. So this guy, this one here is the main drain plug. And then the guy just next to it, to my left, this guy here is the secondary drain plug. So you have to remove both of them. And my biggest gripe about this car, and it's really not that big of a deal, is the when oil drains out, it actually hits this cross member right here, which is also an engine mount, and it just makes a mess. And I am I've yet to find a funnel that actually will stay in place and work. But um, you can wipe it all up. It's just it's just annoying. That's all. So I'm going to get these things loosened up and removed so we can drain this oil. So there's a, a revision to what I just told you about the tools. So the 8 millimeter is actually a 10 millimeter. So forget about the 8, it's a 10 millimeter for the second drain. So let me see if I can grab these bolts out of here and uh, get this stuff drained. So you saw me underneath the car loosening up those, the primary and secondary drain bolts, but now this little cheat here you remove this cover here which you really don't need to but I like to because um, it gives better access to the oil filter housing which I will show you in a second but um, reaching in here so you're not underneath the car when the oil starts going everywhere due to this uh, design flaw if you will um, it's better so here we go here comes the mess You don't want to use these o-rings or gaskets a second time the oil kits come with them I'll set you guys up here on this tripod so I've got oil everywhere see what I mean it just gets everywhere Secondary drain plug. You want to make sure the washers come off with the bolts. Each drain plug has a washer. The big one is aluminum, and I believe the small one is copper. Yeah, you can see it, copper. These do not get used again. Don't try to reuse them. It's not worth it. I guess it's not that bad. See what see what I mean by the mess though? It's just annoying. So this car takes about three and a half quarts. It's pretty straightforward. Thank you. 
drives me nuts. You know what? I know why I told you guys 8 millimeter. Because the, uh, the oil filter cap. So those three bolts right there on top of that guy, those are 8 millimeter. So you do need an 8 millimeter. I'm gonna go grab that real quick and be right back. As you can see, I put a date. That was my last oil change right there. I did. I always do these oil changes way, way in advance from when they when they call it out. It helps me sleep at night. And let's face it, oil is a lot cheaper than engine parts. And these engines are so expensive that I don't even think it makes sense rebuilding them anymore. I think they just you just go buy a, a long a long block or even a short block and swap everything over. But I tend to get new cars every few years. I honestly have never had to replace an engine, but I also change my oil in everything way too soon. But again, it's, it's this or that. You decide. Yeah, it's really good that these these bolts don't come out super easy because you can imagine if they did how many of these caps would blow off and make a big old mess and it would be too late before the owner even knew it that his engine was out of oil so just when you thought you're gonna get frustrated <laughs> just trust the process is just removing this cover and you can see there's an o-ring there which we will be replacing and here's our oil filter it goes on a kind of like a little pedestal at the bottom of the, of the housing so it takes a little bit of effort to get it off but meanwhile, my drain plugs are still open, so I'm, I'm still allowing the oil to drain while I'm doing this. Here's the oil. 
actually looked really good, relatively clear. This uh, car's only got 600 miles on it, and this is my second oil change. So, whoever the next guy that buys this car is, is going to have a solid car. And I did follow the break-in procedure as well. All right, let me uh, grab the oil filter and I'll be right back. Here is the o-ring and the washers for the drain plugs. So I'm going to pop this o-ring on here real quick. This actually comes in your oil change kit. And it's actually $10 cheaper than buying everything separately. So, fun fact. So, um, with this new o-ring, uh, you want to just get a little bit of oil on it so it doesn't pinch. So, just grab a, just a finger full of oil, clean oil preferably, and uh, just go around the oil o-ring and get it consistently on there, and you basically just pop it, pop it on this outer lip here, and push it all the way down. You want to make sure you clean this cap real well. Um, contact cleaner works good, just don't, don't use contact cleaner on this o-ring. out of there okay got that on there and I got the, the new oil filter here it only goes on one way the bottom goes on the bottom I'm sorry the opening goes to the bottom there's no need to lubricate this because it's already got oil inside inside that little cartridge I did wipe out the cartridge though, just, just so you guys know. Let's see if I can get you guys set up here to see. feel around in there for that little post in there on the bottom and you just push it down on that and the cap actually locates it as well and I'm gonna grab my my uh, sharpie real quick to redo this date So you got, got my date on here, that's uh, extra, but it's uh, nice to know at a glance when you uh, last changed your oil, so I always put the date on there. I've got the cap fit on, it can only go on one way, there's actually a boss right about here that uh, only allows you to put this cap back on one way, so you can't really screw it up in other words, because believe me, if it could be screwed up, I would screw it up. Thread these guys back in here. These don't need to be cranked down, just snugged down. And then obviously check them after you fire the car up again. But we still got a few steps to go. See, this isn't bad, is it? I, I know what you guys are thinking. It's like, oh, I can do that. That's why I do these videos, just so you guys can help yourself and understand your car as much as possible. Because a lot of people are scared of it and they shouldn't be. I always think, well, a human designed this car. A human put the thing together. Why can't I? Turns out I can't. And I'm gonna be doing a series of, of these types of things mostly geared towards maintenance because that's what most people will will take on themselves instead of you know, swapping an engine or 
I actually may be swapping a 900 uh, Razor engine out for my friend here in the in the coming months, which I will film. But you know, it's it's all these cars, all the modern vehicles nowadays, are all plug and play. There's no cutting wires. There's no splicing things. It's, it's all just weather pack connectors. And it's really all pretty straightforward. And I'm sure right now all the dealers are overwhelmed with everybody waiting to the last second to get their cars worked on. That's that's if people do get their cars worked on. It's uh, there's a lot of people that go to the sand dunes that uh, don't even look at things before they leave leave town. And man, that's a recipe for disaster, a ruined trip, in my opinion. And I'm the guy that usually has to fix their stuff. So I always tell my friends, look your cars over. It needs to be changed, change it. Like belts, drive belts for one, one thing on these cars are are very, very um, well, I guess they're they're frowned on because they break. But you know what? I, honestly I've been driving I've had almost every side-by-side -side model since 2007 and I've never had a belt fail not one you want to know why it's because I change them at a thousand miles regardless of how they look and I don't put additional weight on the car or my car that the car doesn't need and that all compiles into a belt situation you know, it's the more weight on these cars, the more sensitive they become to weight. They don't have a ton of torque, so they uh, they are very sensitive to weight. In fact, just putting one passenger in one of these cars changes it, the way it handles tremendously. So think about the stuff. If you're going to add add something to your car, think real hard about it. Do I really need that? Like a cage, a cage makes sense to me. Extra bars everywhere? No, that doesn't make sense. I just, I like to keep things simple. So I'm just going around here, just making sure it's all snugged. Yeah, crisscross pattern because it's aluminum. Not, it's a quarter inch drive ratchet, so you really don't have to crank on it. All right, let me locate these uh, drain plug washers, and I want to make sure that this done, thing's done draining. I wanted to show you guys this. These cars come with a magnetic drain plug, and you can see it's kind of an odd-shaped drain plug. Usually, the the magnetic part is protruding out the top, but this one's kind of cupped in, which I guess it makes sense because they don't want the crank scraping uh, getting too close to that and redistributing those little pieces of metal so but that is why they use those see the little metal flakes it's just breaking stuff there's nothing nothing troubling I guess you could say and I always look at the oil filter as well and there's there's a couple little shavings on it but nothing to be alarmed at if, if you had major problems this thing would look like a, a Chia pet so yeah I'm gonna wipe this off and I put the new uh, washer on it. I'll be right back. All right, I got my drain plug, the washer, new washer back on. Again, don't, it's not worth reusing an old washer. It's just not, especially in this case. I'm gonna try to do this with you guys. Being here, no, it's probably not gonna work. I like to wipe off the drain plug hole if I can to get this as clean as it can be. Yeah, this is a big mess. But the dealer will do this 
exact same thing. So I can promise you that. This is just super awkward being not able to film very well. You can kind of see the hole there dripping. ratchet here or sorry extension and socket that's what it looks like from the bottom but you can see where I'm going with this on the top here and you want to do this very carefully see and the reason I'm not using my ratchet is because it's it's it could easily cross thread and you don't want to do that that would be really bad so got it threaded in just as far as I can go with my hand. That's the 17. And my sorry for all the crazy footage here. Hold this camera as hard as that looks. And the slotted holes in the skid plate are the uh, are the way the holes that you use to to drain. So keep that in mind. Now I've got I've got this the secondary drain plug going back in. Perfect. Right in the drain plug hole. <laughs> the socket came off too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not making a very good case, am I? <laughs> Hold on. All right, got both drain plugs back on. It's kind of hard to see. I had to uh, put the camera down to tighten them or to snug them up. But uh, really important that you snug those guys good and doesn't hurt to put it put your ratchet on there twice just to check it so all right moving on to filling the oil all right so I put my hose cover and uh, fuel line cover back on here just gonna take these guys back up you want to keep this cover it really does uh, keep the debris especially if you're in the desert hitting the uh, hoses and popping a hole in them, so it's just cheap insurance. bolts actually have a little spot of Loctite on them too from the factory so they're a little hard to get off sometimes but they they stay on so I've had some cars that just shed bolts for no reason even if you tighten them so all right now we got to get to that tube right there that has a little yellow uh, 
dipstick um, on the top there. It's kind of uh, inconvenient, but that's where they put it. So we got to fill the oil through there. So let me get positioned here. All right, so in order to get to the dipstick, it's a screw-in type right between the CVT intake and exhaust. Just unscrew the dipstick. Pull it out. Pretty straightforward. And I got it off here. So you're going to want to be in this range. Hopefully you guys can see it. There's a hatch hatch mark here with min and max on it. You want to achieve, uh, you want to stay in that hatch mark. I like to be towards the top of it. Uh, more oil the better for me, but um, it's debatable of course. But uh, 3.7 quarts, I believe I told you 3.5, but it's 3.7, so I've had it come out different. And then, you need a funnel. Uh, clean it out real good. A clean rag. And it's kind of tricky to get it in there, but you kind of maneuver it somehow in there. of this video I popped all the, the foil tops off all four quarts so it's easier here goes one it's kind of tricky to do this so I hope I don't make a mess making sure you're not overwhelming the funnel So that's about three and a half there. So I'm gonna fire it up. Sometimes the factory will, will recommend a capacity that's if the engine cases are split. And so you don't wanna go all the way to 3.7. You wanna kinda of sneak up on it. So I'm, I stopped a little bit before half court. So um, hopefully that uh, gets me where I need to be. So now we're gonna fire it back up and uh, let it circulate for a little bit, fill up the oil filter housing and uh, get into the coolers and all that stuff. So give me a sec, I'm gonna pop this fil uh, funnel out and um, fire it up, I'll be right back. All right, dipstick's back in. I'm gonna fire up the car and on startup, you're gonna hear a little rattling um, and what that is is the what is going on here is the uh, Camtain tensioner, which is a hydraulic unit that just has to pump up just like a hydraulic lifter. So don't freak out, it's just because you drain the oil, it's all good. All right, here we go. Oh, I didn't hear it.
out. Just make sure that O-ring's not leaking. I just had a scary moment. Don't let this deter you from doing this. Uh, but I have a feeling my cam chain tensioner just wouldn't pump up for some reason, but I just turned the car back on. So I was like, oh my God, this thing's coming apart. And it just went away. So thank God. I, uh, I Like I said, this thing's got 600 miles on it. So uh, yeah, I, I, it's fine. I, <laughs> I was scared though, <laughs> but look at it, let's do it now. I'm like, all right. bring it up to full temperature even though the instructions say to do that when you first uh, start the car to get the oil circulated um, and that could have been why um, but it's fine now thank God and uh, again don't let this little little problem deter you from doing this as long as you check your drain plugs and replace those washers and o-rings and everything is just so don't overfill the oil, just sneak up on it. Um, you'll be fine. <laughs> and uh, check your oil every time you go out, because again, engine parts are way more expensive than oil, so. Um, all right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to check the air filter. I know this is all real basic stuff, but I'm trying to encourage people to do this stuff on their own. It's easy. And let me tell you, the guy at the dealer that's gonna do this stuff for you, he's, He's not the technical guy. He's the lowest guy on the totem pole, so to speak. So um, hang on a second. I will uh, show you how we check the air filter. All right, so the air filter access on a Can-Am is on the, uh, behind the driver in the engine compartment. Pull these little guys clips down. Two, three, A little bit of finagling to get this cover out of here because of the clips. Again, not a great, not a great design, but it actually the, the air filtration system works really good. But the uh, engineers are at it again with this. So you can see, this is after. Uh, weekend in uh, Lucerne Valley. That's all that's in there. Just a little bit of, a little bit of dust. I'll wipe that out in a second. But the magic comes from the filter design. And this is very similar to like what you'd find in a diesel uh, tractor trailer. Or uh, like a, it's a dot like a Donaldson type filter. It's a huge element. It's about I don't know I'd say about 12 inches long, about uh, seven inches in diameter. Of course, Can Am's the only one that makes these. They they do not cross reference that I know of. But here's how to clean them. I always put the opening down. All the dust coming off that. Not 
that's it. That's all you gotta do. Don't don't use compressed air. Cause it'll it'll blow a hole in the film in the paper. Just do that. As you spin it. You see a little bit of water's gotten on there. Right. Right there, a little bit of water, looks like. That's not a big deal though. Yeah, look at all that paper element. That's that's a lot of filtration there for this little engine. All right, so let's set this aside. And I'll show you inside. Let me grab a light. Give me one sec. Here is this is how dirty it is after one one drive and probably about three or four hours in the dunes we're well, not in the dunes but in the high desert the system works really well and you can see the turbo impeller right there and there isn't any sort of um, debris past the air box a little bit of oil from the uh, crankcase breather that vents into the intake but um, other than that, it's really, really clean. So I just uh, sprayed Windex on a rag and I'm gonna wipe this box out. And I'm gonna start from the very inside where the impeller is. Just to grab any oil that may have gotten in there. But it's, it's intended to go in there, it's, it's for smog. In fact, I can actually uh, do a little cheat. What I've done in the past is bought like a little filter element from like Summit and un and disconnected that hose that uh, br vents the crankcase into the intake track, and it, it basically it's it's basically recirculating that that smog or or vapors from the crankcase and. Uh, the EPA wants it redirected back into the engine and uh, it's actually um, it's not not ideal I guess we'll say it's not gonna hurt anything but it's not ideal it'll uh, give your air fuel a uh, a little more rich I guess you could say and so it'll defuel and make it run leaner but Again, it's not the end of the world. Come on. There we go. Okay, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Just wiping this thing out. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of silly to do this, but it's just part of the maintenance deal. I like to do it. I like my engine clean. And the oil stays clean. The cleaner the air going into it is but I think the days are are gone that these cars come with a bad air, air intake system like the early Polaris 800s or were plagued with that issue and then people were putting KN filters on them which well, they flow they flow really good but they also let stuff by so highly debatable topic I think a K&N has its place on a race car or a hot rod, but my daily driver does not have a K&N in it because I think paper filters the best for longevity and I got enough hot rods. Let's see here. Yeah, you don't even have to oil these surfaces anymore. The old days you had to put a little lip of grease on there just to create a good seal but these modern seals are so well so well done that you don't have to do anything all right so I'll put this guy back hole goes down first a sec here. yeah and the damp excuse me the damp rag actually just grabs the dust There it goes back in. Goes 
right on that boot. Okay, see? And then, this, this drain right here goes down, obviously, but that's, that's actually in case air actually gets introduced into the air box. If you submerge the vehicle, it'll actually just drain out. I usually do the top left one first. It's kind of the hardest to get to. All right, there's that. And if you do it in a crisscross pattern, and you look at your seal that. Right. yeah you just want to be careful you want to make sure you're careful and you don't get a false a false latch because the uh, this box I don't know, it's pretty, it's kind of flimsy, but you may, uh, you just want to run your fingers around there to make sure the reveal between the cover and the actual air box is, is consistent. Something, there's like some wires here that are loomed and you could easily just trap one in there. That'll keep it from closing all the way. So it's a common mistake. And I believe most of the dust actually comes up through this guy. I think it's very uh, possible because of all the dust that the front end kicks up. But it's not a big deal. That filter is very, very um, big. So anyway, so that's that. I'm going to put my sand tires on here in a few minutes. And um, I will share with you guys little tips and tricks for that. All right, it's the next day. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the uh, oil change footage. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of roll into the uh, rest of the prep that I do to get my car ready uh, for the dune season. Um, I do this every trip. However, um, it's just peace of mind. A lot of people, you know, that have beadlocks don't uh, don't ever check them and then they wonder why they leak or they get loose and they shed bolts and whatnot so B locks are uh, are something that you have to chase they're uh, it's not a maintenance free deal it's a mechanical um, lock for the outer bead of the tire obviously and um, you know these bolts are getting vibrated they're getting beat on and um, Especially when they're new, they they uh, sometimes they loosen up, um, as well as lug nuts. So if you don't torque your lug nuts, you just kind of snug them up, and it's fine. Just check them. It's just it's worth your time to check them. So um, and again, don't take your stuff to the dealer. You can do it. I promise you, you can do it. Just with some basic hand tools. That's the whole premise of these videos: is to get you guys to to be brave and and do it because you know what I did it for the first time and I lived and I know a lot of guys that I've talked into doing it too and it's it's now they do it on a regular basis in fact at the risk of rambling here I've got friends that carry more tools than I do and sometimes I go without my tools and I get bit 
almost every time. So, and my buddies that I've influenced to carry tools, carry tools. And it's pretty cool. So I always thank them because I, I end up being irresponsible, but the truth is I do all my prep at home. Um, so I don't have to work on stuff out there when I'm on vacation. So anyway, that's enough ranting. Um, I hate to be that guy, but I'm, I'm just trying to sway you guys into into uh, having the courage to do this stuff on your own. After all, you paid a lot of money for it. So think about that. <clears throat> but you may recognize these wheels. I had them made last spring by a company called OMF Performance in Riverside, California. Um, these are custom, absolutely custom. They will make you any wheel you want, any diameter, any width, any offset, backspacing. And you can choose your colors. You can choose all sorts of different patterns that they do on their mill and CNC machine. Um, in fact, if, if you were to invest in a set of these wheels <clears throat> and you decide to change brands at some point, you can actually buy these plates. They just unbolt from the wheel. So you keep the actual wheel, but you can actually re replace these plates. About, I think they're about a hundred bucks a piece. Um, and in the grand scheme of things, that's really not that much. So if you swap brands like from k m to Polaris or vice versa or Yamaha or whatever. Um, so these, these wheels aren't just for the one car that you have. <clears throat> so, but I have these custom spec from, from my taste and my driving style. And um, I'm going to go around and, and torque all the fasteners right now. I know it uh, sounds kind of boring, but it's stuff you got to do. So let's uh, get going. Torque wrench is set at 21 pound uh, feet. I usually just go around twice because as with aluminum, it flexes. And when you tighten one, it may loosen another. So just go around twice, just so you know that they're all at the right torque. And you want to sneak up on your torque. I see a lot of guys jamming on this thing. It's you're getting a false reading if you go if you go too hard on it. So you just want to hold it with one hand on the left here, and then just sneak up on it. Otherwise, you'll get a false reading. And this also applies to drag race guys, too. They run bead locks in the back of their big cars, and same concept, exact same principle. Um, really versatile, but 
ideally you can actually swap these out, like, like I said, uh, to change brands, which which makes the wheel investment make a whole lot more sense in our opinion. So, it's got, this, this hardware has top lock nuts, so they're not nylock, and just nylocks actually wear out. And these will wear out over time as well. Um, if I was preparing a race car, I wouldn't take these off and put them back on more than twice because the top lock actually wears out. It's more of a friction hold than a, than a nylock uh, nut. So these are preferred in the racing industry. So if you can, if you can get these nuts instead, I would recommend them. These ones don't loosen up very often. In fact, I can't remember the last time one did loosen up. Well, every once in a while, you gotta give them a snug. Made in the USA. Can't say that very often these days, can you? Like, there's very little, very little products are made in the USA anymore, unfortunately. I suppose a smarter way to do this would be just to go around and check them all with the ratchet. And if one's loose, put a wrench on it and tighten it. You really don't need a wrench unless it moves. Actually been pretty good since I got them. They're uh, they don't really leak at all. Usually bead locks leak a little bit over time, or any tire for that matter. Theoretically, uh, as Mario Andretti would say, you lose a pound a pound of pressure every month in a typical tire. So uh, words of wisdom wisdom for. Probably one of the best drivers that ever walked the land on Earth. Okay, so I like to run um, for Glamis sand, which is typically very, very dry. Um, I run 10 psi in the fronts and 10 or 9 in the rear. Typically, 10 feels a little bit knifey, and what I mean by that, they feel like they're they're uh, digging in. And you don't want them to dig in, you want them to float. So, uh, so yeah, let me uh, adjust these, or check them. And we'll go from there.
so I'm using my extra big beam block here. Chalk the front tire. But you have to use a, a block with these uh, with these cars because they make so much travel. <laughs> you can't get the tires off the ground without one. Now it's not as big of a deal on the back because it's in park, but if before you jack up the front, you want to loosen the lug nuts while it's still on the ground. Good chance to inspect your brake pads too. I made a red mark when I mounted these to put at 12 o'clock when you put the tire on on the wheel. This red mark right here. And I'll show you in a minute why. Sorry, my battery died. So, that block I was showing you guys, literally like a half an inch too thin. <laughs> so, I had to put the other tire on because it was a little higher off the trailer. And then, once I got the lug nuts, or the lug nuts like snug, so they're, they're fitting onto the hub perfectly, I just snugged them down, I didn't torque them. And then I came over here and basically I don't recommend doing this without jack stands, but I was able to actually push up on the car and get the the wheel into the hub. Again, I don't recommend doing that. I forgot that I have to put like a piece of one by um, on top of that block to get this car off the ground. Each year they seem to up the travel on these cars, so I, I, I lose track of how much wood I need to use. So anyway, enough of the excuses. <clears throat> I'm just going to seat these guys. And these wheels are machined on the hub plate to accept the hub actually and it's and it's actually it has some bosses that actually grab the hub behind it so it's more of a it's not just a a um, mechanical um, connection by the lug nuts it's also it's also housed the hub is housed so it strengthens strengthens the hub in other words just another cool feature of these wheels. OMF literally thinks of everything. Because most, they mostly sell to racers and uh, fancy buggy guys. But uh, I, I love their wheels because I can basically get whatever I want. And a lot of the over, over the counter wheels don't come in the sizes that I prefer. And you'd be surprised that OMF is not that much more expensive than regular over-the-counter wheels. In fact, Method, their race wheel, which is a V-lock, um, is about $100 more per wheel than these. And they only come in two different sizes. So, you probably didn't know that, did you? Now, of course, their regular wheels are much cheaper. You get what you pay for. Nothing wrong with a method wheel. I don't like to uh, disparage anybody, but it's uh, it's it's actually very close. And then you get exactly what you want: the color, the the design, everything. So enough, enough of that. 
So I've got these guys on. I'm gonna lower the jack and swap it to the front. Hang tight. This is what I was talking about on those, the rear wheels. See how it's, it's all uh, milled out here? So this actually captures the hub. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, there you go. So that actually captures the hub and actually uh, provides more strength. So. so, I wanted to show you guys what I believe is the most important thing when you're installing paddle tires. Is it, see how the paddles are aligned with each other? That's why I did those red marks. So I, it, I don't have to do this, you know, 10 times to like leave them, you put them on, you leave them loose and you can clock each wheel so the paddles line up. So if you bought a set of wheels over the counter at, at a dealership, you get home and you're trying to actually line these paddles up, most of the time they don't clock these paddles on the wheels. So it starts with the, the tire, the guy mounting the tire on the wheel. If it's sand tires, they should know better, but you'd be surprised. Um, but it's it makes your car more efficient in the sand and I know it's debatable some people say it doesn't matter but let me tell you all the serious guys will clock their the paddle cups so they're exactly hitting the sand at the same time makes sense to me what do you think Front wheels don't, or tires don't need to be clocked. <clears throat> but for those of you who've never used paddle tires and you want to know what it's like, I can tell you right now that most of these modern UTVs are powerful enough to just go just about anywhere in the sand. But if you have paddle tires on your car, you will be able to go anywhere you want at any moment and at the last minute. You don't need to carry momentum. It's quite amazing. But I would recommend looking into what tires work best for your car. That's a biggie. Because a lot of tires don't, don't work very well. And some do. But your, your car will will have a recommended tire for it. And then of course, a lot of it's driving style, how, how you drive. Some guys like full buffs in the front, which I have tried. But if this car has, has some understeer, so it, uh, it'll push a little bit in the turns. So that's why I elected for the, the, the Mohawk. A Yamaha YZ or YXZ 1000, and uh, I had buffs on that, and uh, Sand Sand Tires Unlimited Comp Cut, um, and that that set of tires worked really well for that car because it turned in really well. But again, it's it's driver and car specific. It's really sad to hear that Fullerton Sand Sports is no longer. I used to talk to Dave over there about which tire to use because they, they tested everything they sold. And uh, I'm not sure what happened to those guys. I think they went under or got bought out. It's a shame. They were the authority for sand, sand tires. Now I'm just seating these, I'm just snugging them up because the tire's still off the ground. I don't like to set them down until the lug, the acorn part of the lug nut is seated in. I'm just snug.
always, always unwind your torque wrench. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed our, our video. Um, again, the purpose of this video, it's all basic stuff. I highly encourage you to do your own oil change, change your own tires. It's really not hard to do. You just need a few simple tools and uh, you'll feel much better about it. I promise. You'll know that it's done correctly. You'll know those drain plugs are tight and uh, you'll gain some knowledge. You know, YouTube is obviously a very powerful tool and um, that's why we do it. We want to help people be more independent and not have to wait in those dealer lines because let's face it there a lot of them are backed up with warranty no drive no sale recalls and man if you get stuck in that line you're going to be uh sitting around waiting and letting the season pass you by so anyway if you have any suggestions for us leave it down in the comments and uh we'll see you in the next video take care